What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Curly Mike D, and I'm here telling you... No, that's not what we're going to do today. What we're going to do today is talk a bit about um, generative AI to make comics. And so about a year ago, I made a comic using uh, Mid Journey version 3 at the time, which was really incredible compared to, I guess, what existed before. When you look at the results of what Mid Journey version 3 had versus what you can do with it today in version 5.2... I uh, it's it's dramatically better now maybe not as artistic necessarily unless you really really dig down and figure out ways to do that but uh it's it's definitely we're in a whole new world compared to a year ago I wanted to kind of revisit the topic and do a straight up tutorial using stable diffusion because that's kind of where I've moved at least in the last week and we'll see where that goes I started exploring doing some sequels to uh, the comics I did last year. I did one called Goats that uh, got a lot of views, uh, probably thanks to the, the former YouTube video there. It, it opened up a lot of doors for me to do other creative work with people, and I uh, really appreciate uh, how many of you clicked on that link and went to see it and, and uh, sort of found it and read it. I did some more comics that I didn't really post out in the open because at the time, uh, we're talking November to January, there was this like crazy, crazy anti-AI art thing happening and uh, people were getting threatened and, and people were angry. And so I thought, you know what, I, I want to make this stuff still. I want to just keep writing, but I'm just going to post it on my Facebook and maybe one or two other places not tempt fate and uh, get the wrath of, of people who were very possibly justifiably angry about uh, the potential this has to uh, kind of ruin careers and all that jazz. But let's talk about Stable Diffusion versus Mid Journey. So Mid Journey is uh, subscriptions cost anywhere from $10 to I think $120 now, depending on how much image generation you need, what kind of uh, what kind of feature set you need in terms of privacy and that sort of thing. And it's wonderful. It is, to me, it's still the best. Uh, it, it allows you such a wide berth of, of things that you can create. The problem I found this week when I was trying to revisit one of the comics I did is that I wanted to have a scene where a couple in the morning wake up and they're just having a coffee and having a conversation. And I wanted to have one of the characters in boxer shorts. And Mid Journey uh, is against boxer shorts. It would give me jogging pants. It would give me uh, full on pants. It would not let me have boxer shorts. And if I tried to put the person in their underwear, forget it. Uh, even even the phrase bikini, which I tried to like, let's get around this and just put bikini bottoms on the person. It, it wasn't letting me do that. It gets to a point where the censorship starts to affect the creativity. In the past, when I was fighting Mid Journey, it was uh, kind of like it didn't understand what I was saying, and so I was kind of rewriting my stories to kind of work with with the images that I was getting. But now, it is kind of a censorship issue in that I can't get certain just certain clothing. That that seems kind of insane. And uh, there is like this little appeals thing when the robot flags you and generally I've had good results with that, but sometimes it just doesn't even flag it. It just just says, hey, like it, it just kind of ignores what you're asking for and gives you something else. Not because it doesn't know what that is. Uh, it's it's because it doesn't seem to want to give it. So last week I started playing with Stable Diffusion because there's no rules of Stable Diffusion. You could kind of do whatever you want, but the problem is it's much more complicated. It's difficult to work with. Uh, it's just difficult to install. I had to install Python like three times because every time I install it, Stable Diffusion every once in a while will just be like, hey, I can't find this anymore. So I have to uninstall and reinstall. Uh, I, I don't even know what I'm doing in PowerShell. I just copy some code. I get off the internet, paste it in there. This is probably an invitation for hackers watching this to hack me. Uh, I'm just pressing buttons and, and hoping something comes out and it took me a while to get Stable Diffusion going. I think I started probably a month ago trying to install it. I'm not the most technical person, but I'm not not technical. So the fact that I'm having trouble getting it going, uh, I mean, it's it's supposed to be so simple now that you just copy somebody's line of code and, and type it into PowerShell. But uh, sometimes things break or you don't have the right thing installed and you have to go copying an error code and searching for 
uh, that answer and hoping somebody else asked it on Reddit or on uh, GitHub or something. So about three, four days ago, I made a two-page comic on my, I think, first or second day of using Stable Diffusion. It's a totally different world than if you're using MidJourney in that if you're just to use the base Stable Diffusion, you're not going to get great results. Uh, I, at least, putting in a prompt with, with the defaults that were loaded got me a bunch of mangled, weird faces. It took a while to understand what was going on and how you kind of need, like, little extra bonus downloads to to really build your library up of of what you can do kind of styles and looks and even characters in some cases so i want to go over that a little bit without getting too far into things and then i want to go into doing a couple of panels of a one-page comic and uh, how i'm using both stable diffusion and uh photoshop's new generative fill generative fill from photoshop is amazing it also has a lot of censorship problems, which I hopefully I'll get to a little later on. But uh, it can do some really amazing things if you kind of figure out how to how to make it work. If you kind of think that you're going to type in comic page soldier running field, not going to happen. Uh, the biggest issue you're going to deal with when trying to make a comic is uh, getting consistent characters and getting actions. For most people using any of this generative AI art, they just type a couple of prompts, they they prompt a couple of images, and they're incredibly happy. They, they get some pretty picture, and they're happy, and they post it online, everybody tells them they're great, and that's wonderful. When you're making a comic, it's not that simple. It's, uh, it's really, the main thing is getting a consistency of characters from panel to panel to try and be able to tell a story without the reader going, hey, that's not the same person that was in the last panel. I'm not gonna say I'm an expert on it. There are people who write scads of information about this stuff and, uh, and different ways to make it work. And there are ways within Stable Diffusion to really kind of focus uh, what a person will look like by using something called a Laura, which is like a, a trained model specifically of a character, of an actor, that kind of thing. In the previous tutorial last year, I talked about how I use specific actors' names. I would type their name, put it in, and that would make Midjourney kind of go and reference who that person was and give me something that looked like them. And it worked great for what I was doing, but then a lot of people will be like, hey, that's Anthony Hopkins. And that's fine, I guess, but uh, maybe his estate will sue me one day for a comic that I made no money off of. So let's take a look at uh, just the Stable Diffusion interface itself. And this is it. Lots of uh, sliders and boxes. Here we've got the text to image, which is what I'm gonna be using the most today. And generally you write a prompt, you write a negative prompt and uh, you hit generate and hope to God something comes out. So I'm just gonna write a uh, soldier running in a field. And this is using the uh, main thing that it comes with just when you install it normally. And we're gonna hit uh, generate and this is what we get and that is not very good if you're gonna make a comic that looks like this it's gonna be a very bad comic you can say something like oil painting and uh, maybe it'll be better but it's not now some of these things can be fixed by doing stuff like uh, using this high-res thing and turning down the denoising strength and all this stuff that I don't really understand. Let's actually try this, though, to see what it's going to look like. Now it's actually made a frame like it's an oil painting. And uh, it's still not good. Oh, it's, it's better, though. Let's take a look at how much better it is when it finishes. Yeah, it's better, but it's still, I don't know. I don't think I would read that comic either. So there's this whole community that sprung up that is just about making different kinds of models uh, or checkpoints. Now, checkpoints are essentially a new training database of specific kind of looks or specific subject matter that you can load in and use as kind of the default base of which you're using to generate characters. So that's one good way to kind of get a look to your images that's kind of consistent throughout making a comic. The biggest place for that is uh, this place called Civit AI and CivitAI.com. Uh, just to be aware, this is a not safe for work kind of site. There are filters that let you kind of block all the dirty stuff, but uh, 
just just uh, I mean even the clean stuff is kind of PG-13 so so if I want to do kind of a comic cartoon look we're gonna say cartoon we're gonna type that here and we're gonna see what comes up so now we have all these options we've got these real cartoons this Pixar kind of stuff uh, all of it is really great what I'm gonna use for today's tutorial and by no means is this the only way you could do it this is what I used on the comic I did this week, so I'm very comfortable and familiar with it. And uh, we're going to use this cute cartoon illustration one. Now, what you would do is download this file and you would put it into the models slash stable diffusion folder. Other people on other channels will be able to explain this a lot better than, than I can. But basically, you would download this, put it into the model slash stable diffusion folder in your install. And then when you go back to Stable Diffusion, you're going to have uh, this Stable Diffusion's checkpoint list. You could reload it if it's already open. And now you have all the options of all the different kinds of uh, uh, checkpoints that you've downloaded. So I'm going to load this cute cartoon version 1.0. This is going to take five minutes, uh, at least for me on my computer. Uh, if you're using one of those Google Colabs to do this, or if you've got a super fast computer, Maybe it's going to take faster than that, but for me, with uh, about a three-year-old with a 3080 graphics card and an i9, this is what's happening. And it's annoying because sometimes I load up the wrong one and then I got to wait five minutes. So there's no getting around it. Let's uh, sit and wait. While that's happening, let's just go over uh, the script that we're going to be doing today. For today's purposes, I hate doing this, but I use ChatGPT to write this little comic script. Uh, we just needed something nonsensical just as an example. So let's take a look at uh, this where I wrote, please write me a five panel funny comic about a spunky female soldier named Sarge and her dim-witted friend Charlie. So that's enough to give us a description of five panels and uh, some, some dialogue to go with it. So Sarge, a tough, determined female soldier, is standing with her arms crossed while Charlie, a goofy and clueless friend, looks excited. Sarge, with a serious expression, Charlie, I've got a new mission for us. We need to, we need to retrieve the top secret plans from the enemy base. Charlie, grinning, I'm ready, Sarge. With me by your side, nothing can go wrong. So we're just going to try to make these two panels and see how it goes. I want to talk a little about how I use these checkpoints because... If you're like me, you probably have no idea what to type, especially with the negative prompts and all that stuff. The great thing about Civit is that there are lots of examples. Like, for instance, if you were to click on this uh, image of this wizard lady, you get sort of the information. Some people don't share kind of the prompt or all the, the things they've used. But in this case, this guy whose name is Prompt Sharing Samaritan, who's the guy that made this uh, this whole checkpoint, he also is a prompt sharing Samaritan and he's shared the prompts, the negative prompts and all the sort of steps and uh, how everything was put into it to work. So we can look at uh, what his prompt is, masterpiece, best quality. Everybody puts that in for some reason. Angry female witch in the forest with arms crossed, wearing a blue pointy hat and orange hair and a blue cape and blue cloak. And then all this garbage for the negative prompt that Luckily, we can just kind of copy this prompt, copy the negative prompt, and uh, paste that in Stable Diffusion and, and get a result. And what I did when I was trying to figure this out was kind of look through these things, look through all the things that were available. I love this one, which is uh, this, this knight. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to copy this and use this as sort of a starting point. I'm going to edit the prompt to make my own character, and then we'll go on from there. So that's kind of the best way you can learn this stuff and, and get a grip of what you're doing before you kind of start writing your own prompts. Just copy this stuff, paste it in, and then start editing from there. I'm just going to copy the prompt and paste it in. And copy this negative prompt, paste that in as well. And we're going to hit generate. So uh, generally you could change the sampling steps. Uh, 20 seems to be okay for the most part. I've started using this high res fix only in the last day which seems to get rid of, uh, not only does it upscale your image, but it seems to get rid of any kind of extra heads. Because I had a lot of cases where there was like a, a person and then an extra head on top or extra limbs and stuff. So that seems to have gotten rid of it. You can change your size down here. 
I often like to do um, 768 by 512, one combination of that to either give me a portrait or a landscape kind of image. And so we're going to just generate that and see what it looks like, just copying his prompt purely. All right, so right away we're getting some kind of interesting character here. And does it look anything like his? Not really. Uh, it has some similarities in that there's a sword and that there's a warrior. But uh, this is not going to probably do for us. I mean, it's similar. Let's see uh, what the final image looks like here. It's nice and it's a starting point to, to sort of look at that prompt and, and move along and, and learn new things. So I did a little testing before this to kind of speed up the journey and I'll show you what the prompts are and I'll actually paste them in the description below if you want to copy them. Um, what we're going to do is get Sarge and Charlie and we're going to generate a bunch of images and we're going to use Photoshop to kind of put them together. But let's see what uh, the prompt that I came up with was. Uh, masterpiece, best quality. I don't know why again. Female soldier, she's going to be wearing a white tank top that's sleeveless with green pants, a brown belt, brown boots, curly brown hair, standing with her arms crossed while Charlie looks excited. So we're going to say standing arms crossed. And that's about it. We're going to generate one to just see what things look like. So not exactly what we wanted. It's a great starting kind of look of what we hope the character is going to look like. Uh, what I want to do right now is just change one thing. I'm going to put the word determined in there. And I think what that's going to do is just give her a little bit more of a facial expression, I'm hoping. And generally at this point, uh, what I would actually do is let's turn off the high res fix, which is what makes the stuff look good. But... Uh, we're going to do a batch count of 12 images right now, and I'm going to generate that. And the reason I took it off high res is it's going to speed things up. And it's just going to give us a, an idea of, of what the character uh, will look like when generated a bunch of times. And this is really important. When you're coming up with a character and you're trying descriptions, I really highly suggest that you do this step. And the reason I would say generate a bunch of images once you have like a general description in there is you can see how consistent it's going to make the character. What I found was that certain descriptive words that I put in just didn't give me what I wanted or they didn't give me a consistent character. And once in a while I would hit a combination of words. Generally, if you're very specific and, and make the person fairly unique in how they look like the curly hair and the soldier descriptor. I think really help here in in giving stable diffusion an idea of what to, to kind of make the character look into uh so i think the soldier has given her muscles and made her kind of tough and you can see now if we look at those 12 people look how consistent that character is uh i did this before and it wasn't quite this consistent but i think that keyword also of adding determined has done this so now we've got uh a very Fairly consistent. I mean, she's taller and shorter, and her belt and boots might change. But really, the hair looks good. Uh, the outfit is fairly consistent, consistent enough that we can fix most of the problems in Photoshop if we need to. So I'm going to actually turn the high-res fix back on, just because it's going to make the face look a little sharper and better. And uh, we're going to do this again. So I just want to say something about this restore faces checkbox, because when you see an ugly face on a character, it's tempting to check this. And I think if you're doing sort of a realistic character or using a, uh, a checkpoint that has a fairly realistic look, by all means, go ahead and restore faces. But I found when I was using it on a cartoony image, it really didn't do much. Uh, it didn't do any good. It, it was kind of mangling the faces because it's trying to restore a actual human face onto a cartoon face, which has entirely different proportions. I'm just going to interrupt this at this point because I realized her mouth isn't open. She's not talking. So while there is a lot of ways to get around that, uh, I'm just going to say talking, speaking, just, just to emphasize that. Another way you can actually emphasize that is to put a bracket around something that'll emphasize it once or double emphasize it. Uh, and, and that should hopefully make the mouth open. 
Okay, doing that speaking uh, is not working. You know what? We're going to do turn off the high-res fix, and we're going to say open mouth. Just say open mouth and see what that gives us. I'm going to cut it off pretty quick. Oh, no, there you go. So we now we know we have an idea that uh, the mouth is going to be open, and so it's going to look like she's talking. We can also do yelling or screaming or shouting, and that generally works but it'll give you a very big expression on this kind of cartoony look. So I think just saying open mouth is going to be good enough to get uh, to get the look we want. So let's turn high res back on. Now, the reason we're going to do like 12 or 20 kind of images is we want to be able to generate the character for, say, the first panel and have a bunch of options. When I was doing my comic, I was doing about 20 generations every time. I was looking at the character that I had generated for panel one, comparing it to the person in the second panel and seeing, okay, which of these costumes is the most consistent? Which of these hairstyles is the most consistent? How do I uh, make sure that when I put them side by side that people will know, okay, this is the same person. They won't be kind of nitpicking that, hey, something's wrong with this. Because you do get uh, messages from people saying, that guy doesn't have a tie in that panel. And uh, they're right, but... Man, I forgot. I'm doing a lot here not drawing this comic. A lot of this is just waiting around. The advantage kind of of doing a comic in mid-journey is you could be typing prompts and sending them out. And if you have like the, the professional level account, I think is what it's called, the uh, $60 a month one, then it, uh, it kind of lets you generate up to 12 things at the same time. And, and so you could be working on your next prompt while one is kind of uh, making you four images. In this case, especially if you're doing like 12 or 20 images at a time, you're kind of using all your GPU power in your computer, so you kind of just got to sit back and do something else. Maybe surf the web, drink some coffee. I don't know. Something. Okay, so now we've got this uh, grid of, of all the versions we've created. I mean, the hair is consistent across the board. She has generally the same look, so I think this is kind of a good start. When I've done this for my comics, I almost always do 20 images at a time, just because it gives me more options, but uh, for today's case, we're doing 12. So I think we have a couple of options here. I mean, she's, she's kind of more squashed in some of these versus taller and tougher in others. Uh, sometimes she's got kind of crossed eyes, so really we're going to kind of look in the end what what's going to make sense for for the two panels that we're making uh the next panel she's going to be kind of sneaking so sergeant charlie dressed in camouflage sneaking toward the enemy base i'm not going to make them in camouflage they're just going to keep the same outfits so we're going to say now instead of standing with her arms crossed she's going to be walking taking big steps sneaking Sneaky. Let's hope Stable Diffusion knows what sneaking and sneaky is. I don't think it will. But we're going to, again, take off the high-res fix. We're just going to generate and see see what's going on, if it's giving us an idea. And right away we can see it's she's just walking. I'm going to say walking. You know what? We're going to try marching. See if that kind of gives us a different, like a high step look. This is really where you're going to spend a lot of time uh, when you're not just waiting is kind of trying things out and seeing what's going to work. So after a couple of tries, it seems crouched down, bent over might work, might give us some terrible results as uh, we're seeing in some of these images. But uh, I think it'll give us kind of the I mean, definitely that does not work for us. Uh, but I think something like this would work. This would work as well. Um, so I'm going to redo this with just now open mouth, just so we have her speaking again. So I did another batch of four, and uh, I think I finally found one that's going to work that's not too weird. Sometimes, I don't know what it is, but it her arms are constantly one straight arm, for whatever reason. This one is also all right too. Uh, she's maybe a little angry there, but I think the pair of these two works pretty well. So that's what we're gonna go with. You could actually just hit uh, save here and we'll call this Sarge Cute Q 
cute cartoon so we know uh, which which uh, checkpoint we're using for it. And now from this drop down list, I have Sarge cute cartoon. And so now we're going to move on to Charlie. Charlie is dim-witted. I'm going to make him blonde. I had kind of uh, something generated. I lost that prompt. So it helps to do these uh, saving the styles to, so that you can quickly bring a character up. Uh, but we're just going to change some things here quickly. We're going to say he's male. He's going to be wearing a green tank top. You know what? I'm going to put dim-witted right here after soldier. Green tank top, sleeveless, green pants, brown belt, same kind of thing. We're just going to say he has short blonde hair. Uh, and in our first panel here... He's going to be excited. He's also going to be smiling. Mouth open and same as before we're going to turn off high res and we're going to generate uh let's generate a batch of 12 here so i know from from my previous attempts that uh this should make him oh you know what i didn't do So what we're getting here is kind of a wimpy dude. Uh, I want him to be big and dumb. I'm going to add muscular in here somewhere. So I'm just going to interrupt this and say... Right before short blonde hair, we're going to say muscular. And we're going to try that again. I mean, what we're getting is good and fits with her, but uh, he's kind of a kid. I want... I want the kind of young, small character to be bossing around the big one. We're going to just keep trying things until we get something that works. By putting enormous chest, I got a much uh, broader character. And I think this is going to work a little better. So if we take a look, uh, I mean, we're getting very consistent hair. The face is fairly consistent as well. But it's uh, determining kind of which one of these guys. I mean, I love the look of this guy or this guy. Uh, even this guy's pretty good. That would be my preference. So now we're just going to generate the second panel for Charlie. We also want him to be sneaking as well. Uh, so same, same description. We're just going to say now crouch down, bent over, open mouth, confused, happy. Similar to what we had just more of that uh, dim-witted happiness that uh, we want from him. So if we look at our last batch and uh, the next action, these two guys kind of match up with this guy. Uh, similar similar kind of build. The belt buckle is the same. So I think we can make this one work and uh, let's let's take it from here. Next, I just want to get uh, sort of the background. We want the inside of an army barracks. So we're going to say inside of an army base. And we're going to change the width here. So we're going to do 768 by 512. Uh, you, could, you could figure out the, the aspect ratio that you want for however, however you would like your panel to look. Uh, let's just go with that for now. So this is looking very realistic, even though we kind of have the uh, the cute cartoon profile loaded. So I'm going to just interrupt that now, and I'm going to say cartoony. And you know what? We're also going to just specify the barracks, and let's see if that's going to work. These are not uh, the kind of barracks I was thinking of. All right, this is looking a little better. This looks a little more like an army base. Great. So I'm just gonna interrupt this because we know we're in the right ballpark now. If we look at uh, what we're getting here, that would almost be great. 
this would be this is kind of perfect as it is uh but we're just going to run it now with high res because high res always just seems to straighten things out okay so we generated a bunch of backgrounds i got one i'm pretty happy with uh we're gonna just interrupt so we're not generating any more and wasting more time and i'm gonna now generate the outside of an army base for panel two uh jeeps tanks actually we're gonna say a field outside of an army base so hopefully that gives us something a little more specific for our second panel because we want to see the enemy base in the background uh it's prioritizing the jeeps so let's say uh field outside uh army base in the distance okay these are all very beautiful but none of these will really work uh this one would work if maybe we had like an army base in the background even this army base so i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this into photoshop and i want to show you some of the stuff we can do in there uh so let's uh close out a stable diffusion for the moment and i'm gonna open adobe photoshop and we're not gonna open photoshop photoshop we're gonna open we're going to open the Photoshop beta, which is uh, the only one that has generative fill as of today, which is in July of 2023. Just going to bring in the images that I know I'm going to need. So we're going to start first taking our background image and we're going to lay out the first panel. So we just want to have sort of a medium shot of, uh, of Sarge and Charlie. And so we're going to grab uh, the shot that we wanted of Sarge and this is kind of the most important tool in doing this kind of comic workflow when you're kind of copying characters from one background and pasting them into another and it's using this object selection tool which really just uh it just highlights around a character in this case it's not seeing her hair as part of it but uh you should just shift click and add that in you might have to get a lasso tool and shift and draw a little circle around that but now we can just uh control copy and let's find our background barracks scene here and there you go you know it's it's as easy as that i think we're gonna control t and flip that horizontally uh we can always make her fit a little better i think here and Photoshop crashed uh, because it's a beta and I changed my mind on which uh, image we're going to use. I, I just like, I know she's got sort of this crop top kind of thing going on here, but I kind of like, she just seems a little more determined than the other one we had chosen. Uh, I mean, you could really go with whatever you want. What I'm going to do here is just select her again, convert and delete that background. Uh, and then we're going to grab Sarge that we upscaled here, or sorry, Charlie, and we're going to copy that and paste him into Photoshop and just do the same thing. So we'll just select him, invert that, and and delete. So very good practice to save while you're while you're working especially if you're dealing with the Photoshop beta so if we just look at these two side by side she's pretty gigantic compared to him uh, we want to scale that down we want her to be smaller maybe not that much smaller but uh, definitely want him to be the taller one and it's obviously it's it's 
gonna magic wand out oops all these gray parts here so this background is uh, it's competing quite a bit for uh, attention here and what I would do in this situation is maybe uh, we're gonna first blur it so I'm gonna go to filter and do a bit of a lens blur this is pretty extreme at 62 uh, but I think I think that's probably gonna be well that's a little too much so you could try this out and see what you like I think we want some of the detail of what's going on but we but we don't want it to distract too much this looks like it could be good there we go so now we've got these two in the scene and uh, I think that's ready to go. So we're going to follow a similar path with uh, grabbing Charlie over here and pasting him into the second panel. And we're also going to grab uh, Sarge and do the same. So here we go, we've got Charlie and Sarge. Uh, we probably want to lay them out a little better. So flip him around. Uh, I want them to be looking at each other, so I'm gonna just flip <clears throat> him around. Uh, so it'll be something like this, but obviously we want to see the army base in the background. It's not only about the two characters talking here, it's also seeing that uh, the image that we have. So what I'm going to do is, not only am I going to shrink them, let's just hide them for now. This background is great, I love uh, what we have going on, but there is a problem in that it is, uh, it's just a little too tight to the trees. So what we're going to try to do is use the crop tool here, and we're going to just expand this we're gonna go to like here maybe we don't need so much of that side but let's let's try that and now we've got a lot of white space obviously this is not looking great but uh what we're gonna do is grab our uh marquee selection tool we're gonna select all this white space and we're gonna right click and say generative generative fill trees and grass so there you go it's pretty mind-blowing the results that you get uh, so instantaneously and it also gives us some variations so that's our first variation and it really just kept the style of the the leaves on the trees and the bushes here uh, this is an option that's maybe a little too open that's another option, but I think this first one is good. We can always generate more if we if we feel like we need to, but I think we're happy with that. Uh, just going to resize Sarge to kind of the appropriate size, which I think is something like this. So here's Charlie. We're going to get him the right size. That's probably about it. Uh, and we want to flip him over. So again, as you're kind of doing this uh, and you see that, hey, I don't have enough uh, space on this background still, you can always go back and uh, I'll just save this panel a bit and use that crop tool again. Just give them a little more space. We want them to, to be out to here, get their full bodies in. So first I'm going to hide these characters, and then I'm going to make the selection here. And we're just going to generate without putting in a prompt just to see what happens. So 
So there we go. Uh, there's a bit of a border there. I think this one works the best. What we're going to do is just uh, do a generative fill here as well. See if we can just clean that up. The great thing about generative fill is it blends what you have with what it makes in, in, in a, generally a seamless fashion. So that works pretty well. Uh, just going to see if I can clean that up. So I really don't like this area of the image, and we could use the generative fill again, but we're probably going to fight with it a bit. So I'm just going to do the old... Uh, I'm going to flatten this all down, merge these layers, and now I'm going to use content-aware fill on this area. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use it on this whole area here. And content-aware fill... And we're going to get rid of the trees. We really want to not have any sort of brush and bushes. What we want is just some grass uh, so that Sarge and Charlie are standing there. And this preview shows us what we're going to get. It's pretty good. Uh, it's maybe a little hard edge there, but we can always do another generative fill here. Just kind of blend that a little better. And you'll get this weird thing. I mean, what could possibly violate uh, community standards? But let's specify grass and see how it goes. That one works all right. It's, uh, again, if I was doing this for real, I would probably spend a lot more time on it. But uh, for the purposes of what we want, which is these two here, and uh, I'm just going to move her up a tiny bit. What we're going to do is just quickly throw in a drop shadow underneath it. I'm just going to take the brush tool with a nice soft brush and black. And uh, that's a little too big, but just do something in here under his knees. And I'm going to bring the opacity down. We just want the impression that they're casting a shadow. Uh, we're not finished yet. What we need to do is add this army base in the background. So we're going to grab our trusty marquee tool, drag a selection, and right here we're going to say generative fill, and we're going to say cartoon army base. Cartoon, Bunker, and Fencing. Now that looks pretty terrible, so we're going to change that to uh, military compound cartoon military compound apparently the military is uh, violating user guidelines okay so that looks a little bit better uh, it's closer to what we would want uh, I think we're, we're going to end up having a, a word bubble here and another one over here anyway, so that'll fill in some of these spaces. But uh, that's how I would make the first two panels of this, uh, and then it's just going on from there. So, so here's our first panel, here's our second panel. Uh, 
All of this could take as much or as little time as you want and get as good or as uh, sloppy as you want. I think uh, the hardest thing about this is, is all the waiting you're doing. Is it easier than learning how to draw? Yep, absolutely. Uh, me personally, I could never draw one of these characters once uh, with everything I've spent years trying to draw. I could never draw these guys. But to be able to get them to do this comic, it's really nice uh, to be able to do that. There's so much more you can do about integrating the characters into the background. You could also generate the characters in the location already and kind of blend the two panels together. So you have uh, Sarge in the forest, you have Charlie in the forest, and you just add that gap in the middle that makes it all work. And Photoshop is great for doing that. But uh, this is kind of how I'm working at the moment. I'm not sure if this is how I'll keep working on comics, but... Uh, it's definitely a lot of fun to do this, uh, to be able to come up with these characters that I would never be able to draw on my own and, and uh, make stories that way. So thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know, click and do the thing with the button and the stuff.